Hi Stitchers! Welcome back to I Heart Cross Stitch. My name is Andrea. Today is October 1st, 2016. Thank you for joining me today. I believe that the last time I made a video it was at the beginning of August. So I have two months worth of, of web updates to show you and things that I've bought. So it might be a little bit long, but uh, hopefully you'll stick around to the end. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is do my shout outs. The people that I'm going to be shouting out today, um, many of you have probably seen their videos, uh, but I'm, I believe that they deserve a shout out anyway. The first one is A Stitch Too Far, and I'm going to include all of uh, the links to all of these channels below in the description box below. But the first one is A Stitch Too Far, and I really like her channel. I like the projects that she's working on. Uh, the second channel is Anna and uh, she's a Russian stitcher that lives in England and if you like stash videos she has several stash videos that oh my goodness she has the most amazing stash of the most beautiful projects so if you like stash videos I recommend giving her channel a look through the third stitcher that I'm going to shout out today is Blitz Stitch. I know many of you probably watch his channel, and I do too, and I think that uh, he deserves a shout out. His projects are amazing. The way that he stitches is incredible, and um, so give him, a, give him a try if you haven't seen him yet. And the, uh, the last person that I'm going to shout out today is Cross Stitch Kuba, I think. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that but it's cross stitch and then the last word is C-O-O-B-A and like I said I'll put the link below okay so also I want to give two more thank yous I want to give a, a personal thank you to Beverly Evanger and Amanda Williamson I know that those two ladies don't make floss tube videos but they watch all of our videos and they comment on practically all of our videos so if you two ladies are watching, I just want to thank you for participating in the floss tube community by watching our videos and commenting on them. I know it means a lot to me, and I know it means a lot to uh, other flop, other stitchers who make floss tube videos. <sighs> okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about today is uh, the Go Gold for Charlotte stitch along that I organized. Um, the month of September was Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and I dedicated the entire month to stitching on one project that had a lot of gold in it, and gold is the color uh, representing uh, Childhood Cancer Month, Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, excuse me. And a few stitchers joined in with me on that sal, and I'd like to personally thank them now on this video. I would like to thank Kelly Bell Stitches, Palette PC, Becky from Obsessed Stitcher, Lorna, the Ladybird Stitcher, and Michelle, Gingerbread Stitcher 11. I will also link all of those Stitchers videos below. But I would like to thank all of you very, very much for joining me in participating in this very special Stitch Along. Probably next September, um, so September of next year, I will be doing something similar. So, but we'll see. That's a year from now. So we'll see how that goes. But I'd like to try and do something nice next year as well. And hopefully more people will join us this time. All right, so let's get on to whips. The first whip I'm going to show you is Queen Anne's Lace. If you just give me a moment, I need to find it. I, uh... I very quickly just, here it is, I just quickly brought everything over here and I don't really have a lot of my stuff organized. Actually, my cross stitch organizational system is horrible. I have, it's not really all that organized, I just have five giant bags and I have like one bag is assigned to something, so I need to come up with a better system. But, uh, so. For the month of September, I, w I worked on Queen Anne's Lace, and I'd like to show you what it will look like when I'm finished. In case you haven't seen it, um, just give me one second. 
Okay, so this is what it'll look like when it's finished. It's a lavender and lace uh, design. And here is where it look here's what it looks like now. So I believe that the last time I made a video, I had just this portion done. I, I had a little bit of the flowers done and some of the dress. And look at what I was able to accomplish in one month. I am so happy with the amount of progress that I was able to make in one month. Yes, I had just had this. I just had this. Here, I better switch it like this. There we go, that's better. I just had this. And so I was able to just, oh, isn't that just lovely? I'm stitching this on 16 count lamb's wool Ada. And uh, I, I believe it's from Witch Elt. I don't know, I, I bought it from 123 Stitch and it was a, it was a very coarse, it was extremely hard and stiff when I got it and I washed it before I, I started stitching on it. Um, I let it soak in cold water with, I forgot what I put in it, some a soap of some kind, and I also uh, put in a little bit of fabric softener, and I just let it soak for several hours, and then I gave it a really, really good rinsing, and of course laid it out to dry, and it softened it up quite a bit. Um, so there's Queen Anne's Lace, and if you look closely all of these bits here is Krennic. Do you see how that sparkles? It is so sparkly and there's there's bits here Let's see if I can get that. There's bits here that are not stitched because that's where the beads are going to be and this is a different color of Krennic. It's the, the Vatican Gold is right here in the blue. And this part here will be beads. And then there's some beading here in the flowers too. So I'm really excited about this project. I loved every single stitch of this. I love um, where her bodice meets the rest of the dress. I don't know if you can see that, but it's so much sparkles. And the buttons coming down. Lots of sparkles going on in this. And um, one of the things I changed was... Here, let me... Okay. Um, do I have... I don't really have anything to point with. So I'll just use my pinky, I guess. Okay, so do you see here in the, the finished picture how her chest is significantly lighter than the rest of her, her upper body area, her neck, and her face? This part of her face is a lot lighter. And I really didn't care for that. So that part... Of her skin, it was supposed to be 3774. I didn't use that at all. I used 950, and uh, I also, um, it was supposed to be here. I'll, I'll just show you. It was supposed to be her, her, um, her chest area and her face was supposed to be a combination of these three colors 3773, 3774, and 950. And I felt that the 3774 was, it was the color that was making it so light, so much lighter than I wanted it to be. So what I did was, for this light area, I used 950. And then in the places that was supposed to be 950, I used a combination of 3773 and 950 and then just the 3773 where it was supposed to be. So I had uh, one solid color, one solid color, and then a blending of colors. And I think that that really helped out a lot in, in uh, toning down the, the extreme brightness of her, 
her chest and her face. But I'm really excited about that. And uh, I, wow, I have so much to say about this piece. It taught me a lot. It did. Not the piece itself, but working on one piece for an entire month. Big change. Big change in, wow, oh, so many things. Number one, I am going to be changing up my rotation. Uh, not last month, but um, in August, probably July even, I had a, a rotation where I worked on one project Monday through Friday, and then another project for the weekend, and then the next week Monday through Friday. So I had like, excuse me, I need to have a drink. I had like nine, you know, I was able to work on nine projects the entire month, and that was great, that worked out great, but seeing the amount of progress that I was able to make in one month working on Queen Anne's Lace has made me think that I'd like to try and spend a little bit more time with each project um, before switching to another one. So right now I'm going to try out a three project a month rotation, working on one project for ten days. I got that idea from, oh, is it Purple Frog Stitches? I think her name is Bonnie. <laughs> Hi, if you're watching this, and I'm sorry if I got your name wrong, but uh, I think she does three projects a month, one uh, for th uh, 10 days, and I thought that was a pretty good idea, so I'm going to give it a try. Another thing that this taught me is... I, I, uh, because I worked on this for a whole month, I wasn't crazy, I wasn't looking forward to, forward to the next thing. For instance, here, I'll, I'll hold this up so you have something to look at other than me while I'm talking. For instance, um, in my other rotation that I had, I'll hold this up here. In the other rotation that I had, um, when I was working on a, a, a project Monday through Friday, I was looking forward to the weekend so I could work on the next project. And then I was looking forward to the next week so I could work on the next project. And I was constantly, and I, I felt like um, when I was working on a project Monday through Friday, I felt extremely motivated to get as much done as I could during that week because I wasn't going to be working on it again for and until the next month or if I worked on a project over the weekend I felt I felt I spent I spent a lot of time uh, stitching because I wasn't going to be working on that project again until the next month and I believe that I probably neglected or didn't give other things as much time and attention as I should have and working on this project for a whole month really put a lot of things in perspective for me as far as what my priorities are in my life. And I'm constantly searching for balance. Um, I don't like for things to be unbalanced in my life. And uh, I like to have a certain priority system as far as what gets my time and attention and I believe that the way things were set up before I was giving cross stitching a little bit too much priority over other more important things and so working on this for a whole month taught me that I need to, that I just needed I need to take I don't want to say take a step back but cross stitching isn't my life it's just it's something fun to do while I have free time. All right, so now that I have finished talking about that, I will talk on my mountain lion. I'll, I'll talk, show you the progress I have on my mountain lion. Okay, and let me find it. Here we go. I'm really excited to uh, get back to this one. All right, so here he is. 
Now the last time I worked on, I, I, the last time I made a video, um, I think that I just had this much done. Just, I had his ear done, this part of his, his, uh, head and neck, the top part, but I finally managed to get an eye. And isn't that a beautiful eye? Look at that. I love it. I had, before I stopped working on this one, I was like, I have to stitch this until I finish the eye. He just, I needed that. And let me tell you what, this eye was not fun to stitch because it is blending filament. And I had never worked with blending filament before. And it's, <laughs> I don't think that I'll ever do it again. Once I finish this project, I probably will never stitch with blending filament again. I will choose a, I don't know, petite treasure braid or a, uh, a number four Krennic in a similar shade to whatever the blending filament is. I mean, I'll get by on this project, but never again, never again. Unless, unless, unless you have a tip to make blending, stitching with blending filament a lot easier, I don't think I'll ever do it again, but, but isn't he gorgeous? This is stitched on 28 count, it's a 28 count Joblin, and it's just like a sage green color. I got this from Rainbow Stitchery, the, the, uh, um, the on um, the uh, online company that got that was closed a little while back. I could be I could be misspeaking about the name of that company, but I don't think I am. I think it's right. Rainbow Stitchery. Anyhow, so there's my mountain lion, loving him. Oh, and I got this pattern from a uh, what is that? I know some of you are saying it. Some of you are saying it, but I can't hear you. Stony Creek. Thank you. See, I heard you. <laughs> okay. All right. So next up is Paris Market. And let me find that. Here it is. All right. Paris Market. This is my Dimensions Gold Collection Kit. I'm stitching this as a gift for my sister-in-law. And here it is. in its entirety. This is stitched on 18 count Ada. And <clears throat> I believe the last time I made a video uh, it was just this. I don't think I had it was just this. Maybe. Maybe I had started up in here but I was able to get this done. Uh, you would not believe the amount of stitches that... <laughs> this is kind of like a, a haid um, in the the amount of... It, it looks deceptively small, but there is a, a lot of stitching that goes into this. It is tremendously confetti heavy, but you know me, I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Actually, I don't, I don't want to say I prefer confetti, but it doesn't bother me. So this is all that I have left, and this is going to be, oh, you know what? I forgot. I am participating in the Year of Whips challenge, and mount, my mountain lion is included in that. Um, Queen Anne's Lace is not, because there's no way, there's no way I'm going to be able to finish that by the end of 2017. No. Uh, but this will be finished, and... What I'm going to do with this is I want to finish this before the end of March. So March of next year. So what I'm going to do is I have already calculated how many columns I need to stitch um, each month so that the cross stitching will be complete by the end of February. And then in March I will do all of the back stitching. Um, there's not a lot of back stitching in here. I know that that I did not want to save the back stitching to the end, but I am going to be doing that on this piece. I don't think um, 
I don't think it's going to take me very long to do the back stitching. Uh, I, ba I pretty much have to do two columns a month each month and then I will be finished at the end of February. I will, in March, I will do all of the back stitching. If it takes me the whole month, it takes me the whole month, but I don't think it will. So this will be finished by the end of March. And then I will, I will wash it and frame it and give it to my sister-in-law as a present. Okay. All right. Um, okay. My next project is Home of a Needleworker by Little House Needleworks. And here's what I... I, um, I worked on it just a tiny bit in August. I just uh, was worked on the top border. Nothing really exciting. If you recall in my last video, I said that I had stitched this whole thing and then I had to rip practically the whole thing out because I had messed up. So now I'm, I'm working on it again and all of these are correct. I like triple check to make sure that all of these were correct and they are. So when I get around to working on this again, I will probably be able to get a lot done on it since I will be working on it for 10 days. Hopefully. I'm not going to force myself. That's the thing with this this 10-day uh, rotation that I'm going to try. I'm not going to force myself. If if I'm sick of working on this after three or four days, I'm not going to force myself to work on it for the entire 10 days. I will just switch to something else. And that's just the way it's going to go. And I'm good with that. Okay. The next... Oh, this is also one of my year of whips projects. Okay, the next one is flowers in a vase. And I am so excited that this is getting more and more love from my viewers and people on Instagram. I think more and more people are, are getting interested in this and that makes me really excited. Um, do I have... You all have seen this before, but just in case you're a new subscriber, if you are a new subscriber, thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching my videos. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, this is this is an example of what it will kind of look like when it's finished. The colors in this are are muted and doesn't do the the, the, uh, the actual project any justice at all. And here is, let me get the aspect correct. There we go. All right, so here is where I am so far. Oh, goodness gracious. There, I'll just turn it like that. Okay, so the last video I made I have to remember. I don't think, I don't know if I had this complete or I was working on this section. I believe that I, I was working on this section and I was able to finish this piece of fruit. I'm, I'm gonna say it's a plum because I don't know what else it could be. But uh, there we go. I'm stitching this on 28 count. Eve, it's a 28 count even weave from Charles Craft. I think it's Monaco, no, Monaco, Monaco, yeah, I think that's it, Monaco. I believe the color is antique white. If I had, if I had to do this all over again, I probably would have stitched this on a 36, no, I would have stitched this on a 32 count linen, probably in a neutral color like a, like a raw linen or I um the the color of linen that this actually the pattern actually calls for is is a uh, summer khaki and uh um I think that that would probably look good with this. 
like a, a khaki color uh, or some kind of a neutral but I definitely wish that I had chosen a 32 count but it is what it is I'm, I'm enjoying this very 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 much this will, is also included in my year of whips challenge And you all, I'm sure you probably all know what that is because everybody and their brother is making a video about it. <laughs> and um, I'm really happy that I was able to find a stitch along or a challenge that fits in with what I'm already doing. Because I don't, I'm sure you probably realize this, but I am not the kind of stitcher that... I don't have a sal based rotation. I don't choose my projects based on whatever sal is going on. I just that's just not me. That's not something that I I'm interested in doing. I know that a lot of stitchers do that and it makes them happy and it, that's great. But that wouldn't that wouldn't make me happy. Um, I like to I like to plan out at the beginning of the month. I plan out what I'm going to work on what day based on my own personal taste and then if there's a stitch along that fits in with what I have already chosen then I will do it. Okay that's flowers in a vase. Oh my next one is the English Kitchen and um, oh here we go. Okay this is from a uh, Cross Stitch Gold magazine and I don't recall right now what issue it's from but this is what it will look like when it's complete loving those colors and excuse the noise this is my progress on it so far not too much progress unfortunately I this has been a weekend project up until now but the next time I work on it it's definitely going to get a complete 10 days definitely and um, if I'm also if I'm working on a project um, and the 10 days are up and I don't feel like stopping it there is a very good likelihood that I probably will continue to work on it <laughs> I just want to do what makes me happy Okay, so the last time I made a video, I just I just had this part done. I don't think that I had started to work up. So all of this is new. All of this is new progress. And I'm really happy that I'm using the colors that make sense for this project. Um, if, if you have never done a... Um, a um, design from Cross Stitch Gold and you would like to please watch my previous whip update because I, I explained in great detail how the colors that they provided were not correct because the project was stitched um, with anchor and they, pro they provided the DMC conversions but it, they were not correct Okay, so that is also, I believe, yeah, this is also included in my uh, Year of Whips challenge. All right, so the next project I worked on in August is Blue Butterfly. Okay, so here is where I am so far. I'm stitching this on 16 count Ada that I got from Charles uh, Craft and... Uh, I think I got it at Michael's for Joanne Fabrics, I forget. But I'm really loving this. It, this is a heaven and, earth, heaven and Earth design. I finished the top part of the page. And now I'm starting on the second half of the page. I messed up, I don't know if you can see this, where I had to do some frogging. But that'll be covered up when I work on it again. So I'm really enjoying this. And I do parking. Um, it's kind of like a modified 
form of parking. I don't park, I don't work 10 by 10 blocks going down. I, I, uh, it's very difficult to describe how I park or how I, I work these, but it's kind of like 20 by 20 blocks. Uh, it's kind of like a combination, really, of 20, 10 by 10 blocks and 20 by 20. I start on one column and I do everything in that one column and kind of everything else in the next column. It's kind of like, it's more like a 15 by 15 block, if that makes sense. I don't know if it does, but that's how I do it. All right, so that's it for whip updates. I don't really have a, I didn't work on anything else since the last time I made my video. Those are the only things that I worked on. One moment, need to have some tea. Okay. All right, oh. Okay, thank goodness I know how to edit because I need to go get something. Okay, I'm back. Oh, thank goodness for editing. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you some things that I purchased um, in the months of August and September. One of the things that I have that I got is this needle minder. It is a beautiful bee. And I got this from McKenna at Every Stitch Counts. It's a beautiful needle minder. She has a, I wanted to uh, find the, um, her card, because it came on a card. Uh, I, McKenna, I'm so sorry, I don't remember what the name of your shop is on Amazon. But if, you, if you're watching this, could you please remind me, or, or I'm going to put the link below if I can, if I can remember, remember what the name of her shop is on Amazon. But uh, she showed this bee in one of her videos, and as soon as she showed it, as soon as the video was over, I went to Amazon, I bought it right away. I'm so happy I got it before anybody else did, because I love it. And this bee sat on my Queen Anne's Lace for the entire month of September and it is the most beautiful needle minder. I love it so much. McKenna, thank you so much for making this. And if you're interested in needle minders, go check out her shop. I will put the link below if I can remember what it is. Okay, and another thing is um, Denkai had a giveaway and I won a needle minder. I am was really, really excited about that. And she sent it to me very quickly, so thank you for doing that. And I chose to have the owl. So I got this owl needle minder from winning my first floss tube giveaway. So this will sit on a very on my new start that I will I will be starting soon. Speaking of which, um, October the 13th, I think, it's, I don't remember. It's either the October 13th, 14th, 15th, or 16th. I don't remember. But one of those days is my floss tube, one year floss tube anniversary. And to celebrate my floss tube anniversary, I'm going to be starting Mini Evergreen. I'm actually going to be starting her on, uh, I don't know, either the 15th or 16th, I'm not sure. I think the 13th is a Thursday, and um, I, I don't I don't want to start her on a Thursday because that's a really busy day for me, but uh, maybe maybe the next day, the, the 14th or the Saturday. We'll see. We'll see. But anyhow, I'm going to be starting her to celebrate my one-year floss tube anniversary. And I have spent, I've actually spent the past couple of days um, bobbinating. Um, this has been an incredibly stressful week for me. So stressful that I have not cro done much, much cross-stitching this week. I, today is Saturday. I did cross-stitch a little bit on Monday. I did nothing on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or yesterday. I had four days 
where I didn't do any cross stitching. I take that back. I take that back. I did do a tiny bit of cross stitching yesterday, maybe a half hour's worth, just so that I could finish the back stitching on Queen Anne's lace, the back stitching around her facial profile. And but that was it. Um, it's just been crazy, but but today is a new day, right? And all of the stuff that caused the um, the stress is over now, <laughs> so uh, I can get back to my stitching. But anyhow, so I've spent the past couple of days winding the bob the the threads, you know, bobbinating for mini evergreen, and this is what I have so far. Aren't those beautiful colors? I still have, I still have quite a bit to do, because um, I think it's like 89 or 90 colors, I don't remember. But I love these. And yeah, I, I don't save these, I just throw them in here and collect them until it's full and then I throw them away. But, so, there are the colors for Mini Evergreen. You're hungry? Okay, I'll make you lunch. As soon as I'm done, I'll be done in just a few minutes. I'm going to get myself something to eat. You're going to get yourself something to eat? Mm -hmm. Okay. What are you going to get? No, you can't. <laughs> you can't have that. No, nope. because it's a bag of dry lentils. Donuts? <laughs> uh, Brandon, I'm almost done recording my video. When I'm done, I will make you a sandwich and chips. And yes, you can have a donut when you're finished with your lunch. Just go back into your room. Give me give me five minutes. Yeah, you can have a cereal bar. That's fine. Take it into your room. Sorry. Real life. Go on. Thanks. You're welcome. Go on. Okay. I'm sorry about that, guys. Okay, so um, I also I also got uh, this grime guard from Nell at Little Yellow House Crafts. It's a giant grime guard, but it she designed it as wide enough uh, to fit on an 11 by 17 Q snap, and it's extra wide for hades that have a lot of excess fabric so you can uh, fold it in and tuck it in to this and it works so good I have a, I use an 11 by 11 Q snap for daybreak which does have a lot of excess fabric but this 11 7 this 11 by 17 uh, grime guard fits over it perfectly with plenty of space for um, all of the excess fabric so there's that it's this beautiful um, with medium blues and dark blues. So I'm really excited about you that. You open this and get plate. Okay. I will open it. Here, I'll take the box. I, you don't need a plate. Here you go. <sighs> okay. All right, so the next thing I have to show, oh, mini evergreen, I'm going to be stitching on this beige Ada 18 count that I got um, from 123 Stitch. Okay. All right. Now, the next purchase, I'm going to blame Stephanie from Miss Oso oh Crafty. She showed this on one of her videos, and I saw it, and I was like, oh, I love that. I have to have it. And it was so inexpensive on 123 Stitch. So I went and I got it, but I love this. It's fresh from the orchard. It come, It's a, a leisure arts book, and it comes with... Um, um, I love this because it comes with these. This, I believe, are apples. It comes with all four charts. And it also comes with uh, the, the um, here, I'll show you if I can, if I can find it. So it comes with these borders. So what you do is you, you tear this out of the book, and then you cut this white space out. And it, it's kind of like, um, what is this, a mat? A mat 
board kind of thing, but of course it's not a matte board, but kind of use it as a matte. And I think that's so cool. For the you get four charts and those mats for such an inexpensive price. I was really happy with that purchase. Okay, so many of you are aware of Stash Unload. And I just re recently discovered that Stash Unload has a in their files section, they have a part where if you're in search of something, you can um add what you're in search of to that file. And I was really wanting this chart that I'm about to show you. It's a Prairie Schooler chart. Of course, it's out of print. It's very difficult to find. It's very difficult to find at a good price, I should say. So I thought, well, I'm just going to give it a shot. And so I put it in the In Search Of section of Stash Unload. A couple weeks later, somebody contacted me and said, I have this sweet older lady who 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 didn't want all of her stash to be thrown away when when she's no longer with us and so she wants her stash to go to people who really want it and people who will really enjoy it and so she offered this to me I feel like I'm going to sneeze oh excuse me she offered this to me and I was so excited Weather-wise, I love this. Okay, so Prairie Schooler, I'm not all that interested in most of their designs. I love Weather-wise, however. I love this. Um, red Sky at Night, Sailor's Delight. Red Sky in the Morning, Sailor's Take Warning. Or something like that, is that right? Yeah, I think I got it right. But I love that saying. I love this design. It is um, my favorite design from Prairie Schooler. Get in there. You can see that. I love that. And uh, this is very nice, too. It comes with four designs, actually. These two and these two here. And it comes with these all four. So you have one, one design on one side of the chart, one design on the other, and then you have two on the back. So I'm really, really, really excited to get the, to get this, I got it at an amazingly low price. So I am super excited about this. I can't wait to start it. Of course, I need to get the, the fabric and the, the floss for it. But when I start this, oh my gosh, I'm going to love it. And I'm going to frame it and put it, I know exactly where I'm going to put it in my house. So, yay me! And when I finish, when I finish stitching these projects, I will pass this along. This will be included in a giveaway sometime in the future because I have to share the love. I can't just keep this for myself. Okay, all right. Another really awesome thing that I got, and I, I um, was inspired to get this by Jessie Marie, who I adore. Jessie, if you're watching this video, I have obviously I've never met you. I will probably never meet you in person. However, I I love your videos. I care about you you as a stitcher and I care about you as a person. And um I really hope that you begin to make floss tube videos again soon. Because I will begin to go through Jess Jessie Marie does stuff withdrawal in the very near future. <laughs> but seriously do what's best for you. Okay, so I was inspired to get this by watching one of her videos. It's the bead storage system. As you can see, I've already um, gotten some beads here that I've, and I'm missing two of them. Two of them is with my um, Queen Anne's Lace project. But all of these that I have so far right now, these are the beads for Raven Queen. And I have everything I need for Raven Queen. I have the beads, I have all of the Krennic, Hold on, let me see. and you guys know what Raven Queen looks like, I don't have to show you, but uh, I have all of the, um, I have all of the DMC I need for it, I have the Krennic I'm going to need for it, I'm sorry, Krynic, Krynic. 
and who was that? There was a stitcher that explained the pronunciation for that. Oh, and I don't remember what her name is off the top of my head. But there was a stitcher that explained the pronunciation of Krynik, and I thought it was it was great. So thank you for doing that. And I have the, um, the Karen Water Lilies. You all have seen these before. I'll just show them again. This is, um, we have Periwinkle. There we go. That's a good, that's a perfect representation right there. That's Periwinkle. And Midnight. Oh, that's a really dark. There we go. There we go. Branton, please, please don't knock down my screen. It's the last thing I need. And this is mm, Monsoon. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm really excited to work with those. I need a donut now. You can have a donut after you eat lunch. I did. I eat cereal bar. A cereal bar is not lunch, it's a snack. Okay, I'm almost done. All right, sweetheart, I appreciate your patience. You want to come sit here beside me? Sure. Okay, but you have to stay quiet. Um, nope, nope, you have to come around this way. This way. Here, walk through. <laughs> come through, right here, through here. Come right through here. Come sit down. Right here, sit. Thank you. On your bottom. All right, now you can stay quiet. Okay. Hi! Okay, um, the next thing that I'm going to be starting soon is I, I was able to kit up everything I needed for damask roses. I just bought owls. Shh, shh, shh. Here, do you want to look at these? Here, here, don't break them. All right, so this will, I, am, I will be starting this very soon. This will be my first Mirabilia start. Um, I wanted, I wanted Mirabilia's first design to be my first Mirabilia, so I will be starting that. I got all of the, the DMC floss for that. I have the fabric. It is 32 count linen. The color is Chalice. It's by Picture This Plus, and that is a perfect example of what the color looks like. So I'm going to be stitching it with that. I, I looked on the viewer and I matched those two up and it was just beautiful. So chalice, picture this plus, 32 count linen. I will be starting that very soon, probably in November. Okay, now the last thing I have to show you is a, a recent purchase that I got Ooh. in the mail. <laughs> that I got in the mail, it is... Lady of the Mist, and I'm really excited to be, to collect the, um, be careful, just stay down please, just stay on your bottom. I'm really excited to start collecting the, the floss and beads that I need for this, and of course the fabric as well. Um, I probably, um, I probably won't use the fabric that's recommended here, I'll probably use a hand dyed, but we'll see. And um, I think that's it. Let me look at my, my notes. I think I have pretty much everything. Okay, so if you've made it with me this far, thank you very much for watching my video. Um, and I will probably be having a giveaway sometime near my floss tube anniversary. So look for another video from me soon. Um, and I hope that you all have a wonderful weekend. I hope that you have a wonderful day. I hope you get lots of stitching done. To everybody that's working on the Year of Whips Challenge, I hope you have great success. Today's day one, and um, yeah, I'm sorry about this one. <laughs> okay, so I think I, I feel like I'm rambling because I don't want to leave anything out. And I don't want to end this video and leave anything out, but I don't think, I think I've talked about everything I wanted to talk about. Thank you so much for watching my video. Um, if you're on Instagram, you can follow me at iHeartCrossStitch on Instagram. And I think that's it. 
So, I hope you all have a wonderful, y'all, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And don't forget to stitch what you love and love what you stitch. Okay? Say goodbye. Bye.